As the slow trickle of information continues to be released in the press regarding making a murderer and the subject of that documentary series, Stephen Avery, we find that the state of Wisconsin actually tried to stop the documentarians from doing their job. In fact, they re received a subpoena that could have shut down their whole investigation. So uh, according to the filmmaker or the, the directors and producers behind Making a Murderer, there were many challenges. One was the state of Wisconsin tried to subpoena our footage. We had to hire a lawyer and file a motion to quash the subpoena, which we won. If state had won, we would have effectively shut down the production. So how did they fight it? This is all really interesting. They had to prove that the footage that they had and the information that they had was not unique, right? So the director re responded back and said, hey, the, the footage that we have is just of the court proceedings. It's the same thing that everyone else has access to. What we have is public information. We haven't done anything wrong, so we're going to go ahead and fight the subpoena. And luckily they won and they were able to produce this uh, documentary series. Now look, there's a huge debate about whether or not Stephen Avery is guilty or, or not guilty. He very, very, he very may well be guilty. However, in order to convict someone of murder, which is what happened to him, you have to prove that he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. If you watch the documentary series, it's very clear that there is reasonable doubt, not only in, in one episode of the series, not in the second episode, but every single episode of that series has some evidence that casts reasonable doubt. And so this is just another piece of evidence for me. Why did the state of Wisconsin want to shut this down? Well, <laughs> <laughs> have you ladies seen this? Dr. I have Sears? not, so I feel like I'm okay. out of the loop. We've covered it on the lips so frequently, every aspect of this, and it's unbelievable how people are just responding to this documentary. You know, there was a there was a petition for the president to actually look at this case. You know, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people want this re-looked at and it really this man um, you know I, I hadn't seen it prior to covering it in the stories that we did 36 million he sued a police station for they had wrongfully accused him there there, there was a lot of um, issues going on with with the police um, or the sheriff involved yeah it was, so it was, it was Manitowoc office. County which was the county that prosecuted him for a rape that he did not commit correct they, oh, he wow. was wrongfully convicted for a rape that he did not commit and he served 18 years in prison as a result of that so when he was released from prison thanks to DNA evidence uncovered by the innocence project um, he decided to sue the county for 36 million dollars now as soon as that lawsuit starts getting some traction uh, they slap him with a new accusation indicating wow. that he murdered someone by the name of Teresa Halbach, that he dismembered her body and burned her uh, on a, like a car lot that he worked on, um, that his family owned. It was a family salvage business. And so there's a conflict of interest if Manitowoc County is involved in the new investigation, right? Because they're getting sued by this man. But apparently that didn't matter. They still had a lot of involvement in the, the prosecution, the investigation of this man. There were lots of other pieces of evidence that were uncovered by the defense team that cast reasonable doubt. And so, yeah, he should have a retrial. There should be some way of opening this case up and looking into it again. I'm not saying, oh my God, this documentary series, it's so accurate, let's release him right now. I'm just saying that there was a lot of fishy stuff going on with that conviction. I think the most interesting part of the, the case the filmmakers brought against the state of Wisconsin was the fact that, yes, the evidence isn't unique because he's constantly under surveillance, mm -hmm. being locked in prison, and his phone calls are monitored as well. So they're just producing the content that the state of Wisconsin already has. Exactly. By two viewers. And so this is what they have an issue with. Mm -hmm. I know. It's just, it's, it's so frustrating because journalists have a difficult job to do, right? And so when you want to be a real journalist, there are some serious obstacles that you have to overcome, especially when it comes to people in power, governmental officials, um, those that have any type of, you know, muscle to flex in cases like this. And so I really commend these filmmakers for going after this story and being fearless in reporting it.